Look, folks, this week we are possibly going to find out what's been going on with Karen's business. Well, the credit card, it seems. Now, like I covered in another video, I don't think Trey is the reason behind the um, lack of a payment on, I believe it was the insurance uh, premium or something for the shop, which for one, that's a major issue. Look, we already saw what happened um to karen's old shop due to the fact that she didn't have insurance on the building which i feel was a dumb writing choice by tyler back in season six especially due to the fact that zach gave her that 77k and she didn't reinstate uh reinstate the insurance i mean i get she was going through money issues at that particular time because her business was in danger of closing since her former employee who quit to start his own salon took a majority of her business but yet again she got over 50k from zach at once and didn't think to reinstate the insurance and then the you know fire happened and that's why she's in the mess she's in now but um then we go back to season two the credit card being taken five thousand dollars spent in zach's name and it turned out to be a client who we never saw on camera so who knows who actually took the card but in this case yes yet again we find karen um not paying her bill on time and this particular video is talking about a plot point i talked about earlier in this season already and that's the fact that karen is not a good business owner she really isn't now this isn't to toot my own horn i'm only talking about the way I operate, because if you didn't know, a uh, full-time YouTuber going on, yeah, what is it, October of this year marks seven full years of me doing this full-time, and I've been doing eBay for almost just as long. Yeah, I want to say about four months later is when I started eBay, yeah, because October 2017, YouTube and then I want to say February or March of 2018 is when I added eBay to my you know um, you know streams of income and I run my own businesses I do my own thing you know my this channel do it all by myself eBay store do it all by myself so all the money that comes in is dependent on me you know the amount of content I put out and of course you know you all the viewers if you like the content the views and whatnot make the ad revenue go up and that's you know money that comes in once a month ebay list stuff in the stores um people uh, you know set up i set up auctions or i have the buy it now feature where you can buy it at a set price or make offers and whatnot and i make money from that you know money comes in from that and since i do everything myself and you know i just got this house a couple months ago but over the past several years I've always made a point to look over my books, you know, credit cards, bills, things like that. So I know where all my money is going. I know how much money I have. I'm the kind of person, let me know in the comments if you can relate to this. You pay your bills early. You know, yeah, you get, even if you have the money, it's like, well, I got the money. I could just wait till the due date. It's like, if I don't really need that money right now, right now, and I got money in my savings account, let me go ahead and pay this bill, even though it's three weeks early. That way I got to wait, you know, worry about it later on. I'd say about once every two to three weeks, I sit down, I list out all my credit cards and, you know, lines of credit and bank account and whatnot. And then, you know, I go through all my books, if you will. I go through the different websites on my account. So, okay, let's see. This bill came out. Mm-hmm. I look for any I look for any funny business, you know, like if there's something there's a charge for like, dang, you know, I got to cancel this streaming service I don't use anymore or I'm canceling my subscription to this because I don't really, you know, mess with it. So that's like 10, 15 dollars per month I'm saving. Basically, all of this is to say I, I make sure all my ducks are in a row. Karen, on the other hand, I don't know. It, it makes you wonder how she even made it this far as an entrepreneur with her uh, salon because of the fact that she's going through just easily avoidable issues you know like the whole fire thing like i said the fire is one thing but not having insurance is just stupid knowing that's your livelihood 
and all the times you said like, you know, this business is all I have, you know, this is all I have. And you, you almost destroyed it paying by leaving those curlers on or this, that, and the third. And then when you move into this season, it's like the ebb and flow of the financial stability of the salon, you know, okay, is this salon actually bringing in money? Is Karen losing money? What's going on? And then Pam's roots to riches. I, like I said before, I'm very confused on how the writers set up this storyline. I'm, I'm cheering for Pam. I want her to succeed, but there's got to be some solid continuity here because why in the world is Pam, and this is me talking under the assumption that she is the one who freaked up the salon's finances, and as a result, that's why that insurance thing wasn't paid. Why is she still utilizing Karen's fresh start, the credit card, or basically the funds from the salon for her product? Because she got has a business license. She got a loan from the bank. And this was all due to issues beforehand. Remember, on the grand opening day, the power got shut off because the bill wasn't paid. And the bill wasn't paid because uh, Pam overspent. She was using a company credit card and whatnot for Roots to Riches products and then things she felt needed to be purchased to spruce up the salon opening and whatnot. Well, the salon building itself. And, you know, Karen made her send a lot of that stuff back because it's like, look, you freaking up the money. And Karen had to come out of her own account to pay that bill. And the trace theory doesn't make sense because, look, the woman on the phone, the owner of the building that Karen is uh, running her salon out of, she said that the grace period has passed, meaning that not only did Karen not pay that uh, insurance premium on time, but there was like a grace period of, and I don't know exactly how long, but most businesses, it's usually maybe three to 10 business days, give or take, depending on what company we're talking about here. And that means the, the funds for the salon have been in the red for maybe up to a week. So the whole trade theory, I don't really think works. People are like, yo, they went on that date. Maybe Pam used a company card and all. Nah, I don't think that was it. I don't think that was it. Not to mention if they went out. Well, then again, I was going to say, well, they went on a date. So Trey would have paid. But then again, Pam was the one that asked Trey out. And look, I'm not going to get into the back and forth of, hey, you know what? Even if a woman asked the man out on a date, then the man should pay. I'm not having that debate. You know, that's just not, you know, hey, that's that's not what this conversation is about. My thing is, if Pam really used the company credit card over the past several days to buy stuff for her product, I think that's really freaked up. Um, Now, I don't know if she did it for the free samples because Trey did recommend free samples, but I don't know if um this lines up timeline wise because he made that suggestion after their first date. And we're only maybe one or two days after the fact. And remember, the grace period for that bill not being paid is expired. So I feel like it's been several days since uh, Karen's deadline had passed. So once again, I don't think Trey is the reason. I think it's possibly just Pam. Now, when it comes to Pam, you know, again, she has the loan. She has, you know, her uh, business license and whatnot. I don't know why Karen still allows her access to the salon funding because earlier in the season after the whole freak up with the grand opening and the power going out she said i'm cutting off your access to the credit card but then the next episode or two episodes later roots to riches is popping off and then she's like oh don't worry i paid the money back what are you talking about pam it's write-offs you know taxes take care of that and it's like you're not really getting the point though i mean even though yeah these are deductibles that's still freaking up the money we are supposed to use now for the bills and whatnot because guess what who knows how far tax season is in this show hell you know there's no mention of holidays like christmas or easter so i don't know what time of the year it is but in any case i think that karen even if pam is the one using the money not only is that jacked up and stupid and just taking advantage of karen's um you know resources I think it's more of a reflection on Karen for not taking care of business by cutting Pam off. Like, look, I'm giving you free. I know you got the social media. I know it's your product. But hey, you know what? Guess what? This is my salon and these are my customers. 
And you know what? I'm allow I'm allowing you to utilize roots to riches and whatnot. Um, you know, during these uh, hair appointments and whatnot, and then word of mouth people come in here. So even though it's your product and whatnot, don't forget whose you know company this is. And if the company goes, uh, uh, if the company tanks because I'm not able to pay these bills because you're freaking up the money, guess what? You're putting myself and all your fellow employees out of a job. So yeah, even if Roots to Riches starts making money, unless you pay me all the money back that you owe the company from taking you know money uh, money out of the account, then I don't I look. I could be wrong, but couldn't Karen sue Pam for that? I I feel like you know that uh, she would have to take it to well, not necessarily Andy. Andy would refer her to a lawyer who could help out in this particular field. But I do think that Pam better treads lightly, you know, like the argument could be made. Well, um, Miss Mott, you're the one who gave her access to the account. So what like were you making a percentage from roots to riches was, um, you know, Pam paying back, putting in the money, putting back the money that she took. I feel like that's probably uh, what's been happening. But then again, if they are in the red, how much money did Pam take out? Damn. OK, I'm sorry. I. I I feel like I'm doing what fans have said I do for years and I can't help it. I dig way deeper than I feel the writers. And this isn't just a writing team that's on there now. This also goes to Tyler Perry. I feel like I dig a lot deeper than what the original intentions of the script is. You know, like I'm asking a lot of questions. But the thing is, like I said, I do my own thing. Solopreneur. So these are specific subjects that I have experienced in myself. And there are certain elements where I'm like, okay, you know, I really have a lot of questions about this because is this, you know, quote unquote, realistic? And yes, I know it's a TV show, but still, it's kind of like um, assisted living towards the end of season one. Tyler Perry's sister living. I know most people don't watch it, but uh, when Mr. Brown, they were finishing up the uh, assisted living facility. And I think Mr. Brown only had like two or three followers on his social media, I think. One was Cora, one was Madea, and I think that was it. And he just got on a live and talked about the facility. And then I think um, Philip and Sandra were like, oh, Mr. Brown, you're going viral. And I'm like, how the heck did he go viral just from saying, hey, we got a, fa uh, a facility open for retired people and whatnot. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because guess what? I've been doing social media and YouTube for almost a decade. So yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah, I think that um, it's sad that Pam is most likely the culprit and reason why the salon is financially struggling right now. But I think Karen is also to blame because she's not doing her job. Like if she has the auto pay and whatnot, it seems like, you know, she has her, uh, um, bills on auto pay, like the insurance for the salon, the, uh, you know, monthly rent for the salon. It doesn't matter if it's on auto pay, check your emails, check your voicemails. I always do. Like I always get email like, Hey, your uh, monthly payment has successfully went through. I'm like, okay, that's good. I got the auto pay. I'm glad I got the notification. So I know my lights on for another month or, Oh, okay. I know my Wi-Fi is on for another month or, you know, Oh, okay. Let's see here. Yep. Okay. My Netflix is on for another month, but Karen, you know, not doing that. No. Nah. And plus this woman is on her ass about it. Meaning that I have no doubt in my mind, especially with a grace period having come and gone. She possibly sent email alerts or text messages or something to Karen. And for Karen not to either get any of those things or just simply ignore them. No, nah, that isn't realistic because you look how many of you and be honest here. You can be honest. How many of you had dealt with this before uh, where you've had companies kind of harassing you or, you know, sending you friendly reminders prior to a bill being due? Or if you just so happen to miss a bill, they will blow up your phone. They will mail you letters. They will give you notices and whatnot. No, nobody's just going to say nothing. They'll try to communicate in some way. So I feel like Karen, you know, she, she needs to be on top of her game. And I, and I understand she's pregnant and whatnot, but I feel like she definitely needs to get herself in gear or at the very least a new assistant who is dedicated to the salon and isn't more dedicated to their own craft. And I'm not hating on Pam because, hey, guess what? I did my own thing, too, when I was working at that call center with the YouTube and whatnot. And then I quit when I felt like, OK, I need to focus on what I'm doing. There's no way I can grow at the 
rate I want to if I only can devote so many hours of the week to YouTube when I get 40 hours and then some to the call center. So Pam needs to make a decision as well as I look, you either focus on the salon and Bruce to riches can be your side venture or you could just quit and focus on Rooster Ridges. But either way, you're going to be doing it without Karen salon money. That's what I'm saying. So it's just stupid. That, um, kind of like with Maureen. I feel like um, in some ways, Pam is bringing Karen down in the same way Sabrina's make, bringing Maurice down. Like, don't get me wrong. When push comes to shove, both of them are confidants and a shoulder for Karen and Sabrina to lean on. But honestly, I feel like both of them are holding them back in some way, shape, or form. Uh, for example, you know, with Maurice, I, I said it before, prior to getting uh, the job back, I said, look, I love Sabrina working at the bank without Maurice because, yeah, it was a struggle dealing with, um, I forget her name. Uh, she was in the first half of season one. What was it? Is it Carrie? No, isn't Carrie the name of the current white woman at the bank that's giving Maurice a hard time? Rightfully so. Um, it was the white chick at the, you know, the woman at the first half of the season who was micromanaging Sabrina and whatnot. And, um, you know, Sabrina stood her ground against her. And then when India came in, she talked about how, why she deserves her old job back. The Sabrina who was finding her voice. And this was a Sabrina before these, uh, maternity shots and whatnot that was giving her hormonal hormonal imbalance like i like this sabrina at the beginning of the season but now you have maurice back and it's like she's regressing to the meek sabrina who needs somebody to fight her battles and then when you look at pam oh yeah she's she's held karen down more than anyone else Yes, Andy has done it financially, but I think in terms of like emotional support and whatnot, it was definitely Pam who's been there for Karen more than anyone else. But at the same time, it's like Karen kind of has to babysit Pam because when Pam is supposed to be the assistant to kind of do the follow up work behind Karen, it's like Karen has to do her work and then double check on Pam to make sure she did her work right, you know, so in some ways, and I hate to make this comparison, I think I did it on the video a long time ago, but um, if we want to talk real world, like uh, Righteous and Ratchet, Righteous and Ratchet, the podcast between Kev on stage and uh, Doughboy, which is now um, Here's the Thing with Kev and That Chick Angel. And as someone who was a fan of Kev ever since the Periscope days when he would do his like, you know, Periscope lives when he was going to and from his job, and, you know, then Righteous and Ratchet, the po podcast became a thing. And I love watching that. And I was a Patreon member. I was pa uh, part of the, uh, what, what was it called? The Right Pack? Because I, I was unpacking uh, some of my boxes. And I found my old t-shirt I bought from Patreon. I was like, oh, man, this takes me back. And I would always watch their weekly podcast. I would watch their bonus episodes. I would watch their, you know, um, you know their travel vlogs and whatnot. And I would always notice that Doughboy, his heart was in the right place, but he was never the most dependable guy, you know, in terms of being a co-host, you know, sometimes he'd be late. He wasn't always informed about like the subjects at hand. And you could tell that Kev really had to hold Doe's hand and not to mention his own battles with uh, his struggles with like addictions and whatnot to like, you know, alcohol and whatnot, things like that. And he was really scatterbrained. And this isn't me trying to slander Doughboy. You know, I was always a fan of his perspective on the podcast as well. But, you know, between Kev, Doe and Josh, you could really tell Doe was the one who needed like that extra effort to kind of make sure, you know, he was uh, kept, you know, locked in. But then as soon as they split for whatever reason, it's 2024. And to this day, um, the reasoning behind Kev and uh, Doughboy split from Righteous and Ratchet uh, has not been made public to my knowledge. And um, as soon as Doe left, Kev did his thing solo for a little while. And then Angel came in as his new partner on the podcast and it blew up and, you know, they're doing their thing now. But Kev 
truly, it felt like as soon as Doe was kind of lifted off his shoulders, this man just catapulted into the stratosphere in terms of his success and whatnot. So what that analogy is to say that sometimes you have to lose the dead weight, like the people you keep around you, sometimes it's better to cut them loose because even though you might like that person, you might have history with that person, they could be weighing you down from your true potential. And I feel like, and I fear that Pam, while she's been there for Karen through so much, her aspirations for her own business, which I applaud, could be jeopardizing Karen's fresh start because she's fucking up the money. And then with Maurice, well, that was self-sabotage because even though he was let go by the bank, Sabrina was the one that brought his ass back in. So I have nothing else to say about that. I feel like Sabrina um, let go of Rich because he doesn't want kids. Let go of Maurice because the man is just is not going to do his job properly. And he's a huge stain on her reputation. I think, you know, she could do bigger and better things than what she's doing now. And the same goes for Pam. Like, leave Karen and let Karen do her thing and you do yours and you both succeed. So I didn't mean for this video to go as long as it was, especially with just the topic of Karen needs to get her own books in order. And yeah, that's it. So thanks for coming to my TED Talk. So like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.